Hey there everybody. Had a minute between labor inducing activities and mom's in there visiting with family so figured I'd come out here and have some fun for a minute. Here is my greenhouse. This is the NFT side. I'm wrapping the pipes so that I can control the water temperature so I can hopefully grow all year round once I once I get the kinks worked out. Over here you see there's tea, jalapeno, uh, grapes, pineapple. The one on the bottom left has been in there for two or three months and this one right here on the right has only been there for a couple of days. Um, let's see what else is... Okay, let's go down this way. This is how far I've got with wrapping the pipes. I've still got all that to do. This is my watermelon wall which is still surviving even though they've got terrible root rot. My tomato plants that have been horribly neglected and abused. They've had dry roots for several days at a time, and the one on the right I don't think is going to make it, but the one on the left is actually starting to come back, which is surprising. It was at a at a more than 90 degree bend at one point, so we'll see how that goes. Um, the system's pretty much empty because I'm still working on stuff. Here's the three tomato plants I started right out here. I want to see how things would work. And they're not doing very well, but they're not dead yet, so I guess I'll just keep an eye on them. This is my mixing station. Keep all my chemicals in here. Put a latch on it to keep the kids safe. These three valves control where the water goes. This valve up here supplies this bucket with house water, which has been run through a filtration system. Uh, it needs to be improved on, but it's better than nothing for now. And uh, that's, that's that. I'll put together a video later on to show you how that mixing station works. I think people would get a kick out of it. Uh, last thing to show you here is the reservoir. A lot of people give me a hard time about using five gallon reservoirs, but with my tomato system, the entire system is a reservoir. And then with the other system, it does pretty well. I mean, I've, I've had it full with squash and everything else, and I'm still only coming out here every three or four days to top it off with, uh, with fresh water. Uh, overall, I'm happy with it so far and hopefully it uh, will start providing some food this season. Thanks for watching the video. Feel free to please comment if you, have, uh, if you have any tips, tricks. If you see something I can improve on, let me know. And again, thanks everybody for watching. You guys have a great day. Hello everyone. How are you doing today? Uh, I was out here working on the garden and I figured I would share some of the progress that I've made today. Um, you might have seen in an earlier post I was talking about adding 10 more feet to my NFT system. Well, here it is. Uh, I was having problems with water temperature and, you know, I had some root rot issues. So I started using peroxide and, you know, miscellaneous things that I could during the time. But, you know, with the water temperature being up in the 70s, that is uh, no good. So I needed a chiller. I needed a way to get that water as cool as I could without breaking the bank. So I asked around, got a few suggestions, did some looking, but uh, ultimately they're pretty darn expensive. So I found one on Amazon. They're real cheapy for a hundred bucks, or a little bit over a hundred, but uh, thought it was gonna work. Yeah, yeah, that was a joke. Didn't work for anything. So what I did is I took it back to Amazon and I went to my local store and, and uh, got this one. This is a uh, chiller made by Echo Plus. It is a one-tenth horsepower and it is a great little machine here. It's keeping the water nice and cold and couldn't be happier. Uh, reservoirs nice and wrapped. Got the tape on top there and the foam around the sides. And uh, we'll just we'll see how it goes. You know, this is my first season really doing this and I'm doing a lot of research and trying to figure out, you know, the best way to do this. And, you know, with the situation that I'm in and, you know, no yard and all, I'm trying to make the most of it. And this is what I came up with so far on this side. And, um, let's hope it works out. Thanks. Oh, it's a sad sight. Ah, oh. anyways. It's the end. I'm doing a quick uh, down and dirty for the uh, hot and humid hydroponic group here. I just want to show you guys something really quick. So, earlier in the season, Eric Heimel and I 
we're goofing around saw some some differences uh, in some ways to do some Dutch buckets this is prior to him uh, going to flood and drain and I figured okay what if we took a Dutch bucket put a cap on it and did a, uh, a siphon loop well that didn't work out it ended up screwing up my system pretty bad but I had tomato plants on here nonetheless and uh, what I mean by that is is that there was a uh, like a like a bell siphon we've, we've talked about it we've seen it a couple times on here and I ended up having to go back over and switch it over to the normal um, drain because it was messing up the way the whole system was flowing it's hard to explain I probably can't even explain it but it just wasn't working so I figured okay well what would be the worst thing to do is to keep it just flowing over like that well not only do I realize now that I got root rot I couldn't even get in here earlier it was so overwhelmed uh, but it just didn't do very well it just didn't grow a lot of silt built up in the bottom anyways look at the size of that stem just not really impressive Here's the other guy. Look at this stem, guys. This is my index finger. Crazy, and I'm sure when I yank this thing out, matter of fact, let's just do that now. Okay, well, that's not gonna work. That's gonna be a little more work than I thought um, without trying to destroy my system. So it's in there. It's in there really good. Yeah, okay. Well, this is going to be fun cleaning up this season. Anyways, this is Paul from Hot and Human Hydroponics. I got my workout cut. Right, we got my work cut out for me today. Okay, so here's my reservoir right here, and it's a little bit ghetto, but I've got an Eco Plus pump down at the bottom. I forget how many GPH it is. I just made this quick little PVC uh, irrigation system, but anyways, it comes up, and as you can see, I've made this so that I can turn the, the water off from going up to the plants open this up and basically when I mix up nutrients it makes it a lot easier uh, mixes them really quickly from here the water comes out and I've got six rows of tomatoes so for each row I've got this little valve and it helps me really tweak it so that everything gets fed about the same uh, you can see the irrigation goes up to each row 
um, right here for these three rows I just kind of zip tied my white poly tubing together I made this little PVC thing to to hold my lines up and keep them from getting really bundled up and that way the nutrients flow right back to the reservoir pretty well uh, my timer is a cycle timer they're, they're used a lot more in aeroponics but right now we've been getting a ton of rain the tomatoes are ripening so I'm not wanting to uh, cycle it as much usually I do about every 30 minutes the timer comes on for 60 seconds and it feeds them just to keep them at field saturation but I'll show you what happens we'll reset this All the water flows up to the towers. I've got to get on this ladder <laughs> to show you what's going on. But up top is where I have all the peppers. And you can see right here, the water comes through a really small tubing. Uh, I think it's about 16th inch inner diameter. It's really small so that it's good at slow feeding so we don't get channels. But the water is going to come down through the containers and come out these holes at the bottom. So I go for about one to